G'day, DNA Decay here. The game is Elite Dangerous and the topic is the worm. I want to tell you the story of the Federal Maximum Security Prison in Ross 128. To tell the story of Warren Prison Mines, or just the Warren, I have to take you back 400 years to Alioth. Alioth was founded by the Federation in 2452 and nicknamed Fruitcake for the rich mineral deposits there. Both the Federation and the Empire plundered Alioth, and Caker uprisings have been a recurring feature of the political life of Alioth since its foundation. By 2853, the Empire had attempted to impose a program of genetic correction on the populace. This was prevented by a coup against the military garrison by a new Caker sect. Within days, the planet had been secured and an appeal was sent to the Federation for assistance. A fierce battle ensued. Imperial forces from the orbital refineries began a planetary bombardment, but the arrival of a federal fleet escalated the conflict. Eventually, the Imperial ships pulled back and Federation Navy Admiral Kraser landed with his Marines to cheering crowds in the capital. Kraser retired three years later, settling in New California and later became the colony leader. So Alioth at this time was a Federation system, but revolution was in the air. And as on Earth millennia before, where the American Revolution sowed the seeds of the French Revolution, so the Caker insurrection on Alioth was followed 50 years later by revolution on Ross 128. There, on another resource-rich planet, a popular uprising was led by founding colonist Morris Grant. But this time, the system was in the heart of Federation space. The Imperials did not dare impose the might of the Federation here. Instead of peaceful governance, here, I'll read it to you. Beacon 0191, Morris Grant's death. By 2905, the Federation answered a plea to restore order in Ross 128. Morris Grant, the would-be leader of the colony there, had been assassinated in 2903. A federal task force took charge of the colony and the rest of the system, then enforced a new colonial charter on its citizens, reclassifying it as a penal and correction facility. The planet has retained the name Grant's Claim, But Warren Prison Mines is the most fearful place. The Warren is a name that rings down through the centuries. The Tower of London, the Bastille, Rikers Island, Abu Ghraib, Guantanamo, the Gulags, Karabokan, Alcatraz. From the FFE journals, we have articles outlining the hideous overcrowding. Initially intended as a maximum security penal colony, the courts soon found the Warren a convenient sentence for inconvenient people. The death penalty was reinstated here, not so much as a punishment, but more as a way to make standing room for more inmates. It was implemented to substitute all life sentences retroactively. When this became apparent, 768 prisoners broke out in a daring escape led by Kladvia Malin, a pirate and renegade of the empire. Prison visitors had been able to bring in explosives, armaments, ropes and spare clothes as well as details of an escape plan involving as many as a dozen passenger ships. The overcrowding was reviewed, but the solution was to refuse all visitor access and increase security. The system was permit locked and access is now restricted to high level federal naval personnel only, making it one of the most secured sectors in inhabited space. Family, wives and children do not have visiting rights. With no hope of rehabilitation, these souls are held in complete isolation from the world. And with no review, no examination, no accountability, the Federation has run this prison in total secrecy. Out of sight of official scrutiny, the Warren has festered with corruption and dehumanisation. Every casual cruelty that you can imagine has been perpetrated here. There are credible reports that children are born into this colony and they serve the parents' sentence. Intergenerational incarceration. At least Ravindra Khandriya is known to have left the warrant pregnant, a child conceived in the mining tunnels that have been converted into cells. Since the founding of the Alliance right up to this day, the Federation is suspected of illegally detaining Alliance officials without due process. From the FFE journals, I have found that Meredith Argent herself was threatened with a life sentence after the death of Mick Turner. The Alliance has long wanted to throw open the doors of this prison and shine the harsh light of the truth through these darkened passages. For almost a year, Commodore Helena Stone has pressed for an entry permit and inspection rights within Ross 128. These were finally granted in June this year, and LHS 2541 Alliance Combine set up an office of inquest within the Coralias of Warren Prison Mines. Once in system, the diplomatic cause secured the means and support to overthrow the controlling party and turn the system to the Alliance. 
Today, Federal Colonial Forces ceded control of Ross 128 and the Warren to Helena Stern of LHS 2541 Alliance Combine. No more the screams from the interrogation rooms. No more the gravity hooks and the spit hoods. But going forward, it remains to be seen what Alliance control will bring to the Warren. What does it mean for an Alliance faction to govern a penal colony? Why should the Federation continue to issue permits for an Alliance-governed system? Like the storming of the Bastille, is this a truly important event? Or will Edmund Mann simply retain the Warren as a prison? That idea has some plausibility. He has allowed the scientific dictatorship Turner Research Group to have free reign out in the California Nebula. I personally have seen slaves being shipped in and rare biological weapons that are banned throughout the bubble are legal to sell at the research bases. But against this, there is a strong precedent. Previously, there existed one Alliance prison colony in Khan Afu. When Commander Apos agitated for an explanation, the allegiance was changed from Alliance to Independent. The ruling was that Alliance allegiance is incompatible with the government-type prison colony. Ross 128 is a resource-rich system and could have a thriving economy. It is time for prisons and corrections to be an integrated part of a healthy society, not a festering, distant, one-way pit of despair. At this point, the Alliance elite diplomatic corps have exhausted what can be done for this system through conventional BG action. To make lasting change to the permit lock will require a community goal. Helena Stone is calling for the swift repatriation of officers and personnel detained after Federation conflicts. I'm DNA Decay. I encourage you to visit Ross 128 and see for yourself what the Federation has hidden for so many years. Fly safe, Commanders. <laughs>